Ah, the Sega CD logo. I'm not one to get overly nostalgic, but there's something about turning on a console and seeing this particular logo while hearing this music. And at the time of its release, it felt like magic, as if the sights and sounds were about to take you to another place in time and space. And you know what? It generally lived up to that promise. Sometimes better than others, but all in all, the Sega CD is a great system with a ton of games to explore. With the new core out on Mr., I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to explore just a few of the games this system has to offer. You might be asking, what is Mr.? In short, and the best answer I can give is, Mr. is an open source project done on a DE10 Nano FPGA kit to emulate console, computer, and arcade cores. The goal being to emulate it at the console level using FPGA, which is a field programmable gate array, to be as accurate as possible while adding modern features such as scaling to a standard HDMI resolution. For purists, VGA is still available and that outputs to original video resolution. So if you own an EverDrive or an upper end clone console from analog or the AVS, then you're using FPGA technology for your retro gaming already. Personally, I love all things Mr and its community has to offer. With all of the generous talent behind the project, it's growing to support more and more features every day. If you're interested in hearing more about the Mister, look for a few links in the description. Also, as things progress, I am sure we will be covering more of this awesome device in the future. And with that said, let's move on to the games of the Sega CD. Okay, let's get the most obvious game out of the way first, Sonic CD. This one is a classic. Some would say it's the best 2D Sonic in the whole series. If you're a fan of Sonic's early games, you know what you're getting into here, only with a few added features such as the time travel option. Essentially, with time travel, you can play the same stage, only in the past or in the future, which of course changes the aesthetic and design up. There are also 3D bonus stages, where you chase down UFOs to obtain the time stones. You want to collect all of these time stones to see the true ending, which is a great cutscene if you can unlock it. I never had access to this game until my adult years, so it's not as if nostalgia is adding too much to the equation. When I first played Sonic CD a few years ago, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It almost felt as if it were a lost classic Sonic game. Having only played through it once, I know there's probably much more to explore and find. Sonic CD is just a simple, straight-up fun platformer, which any fan of platformers would want to have in their Sega CD collection. If you have a chance, I would also suggest the Christian Whitehead version of Sonic CD, which you can get on Steam or even as a free app on your phone. However you can play this one, I say play it. This next one is called Soul Feast, and it was a launch game that came bundled with the Sega CD in the United States. Having picked up the Sega CD in late 1992, I spent a lot of time with this one. I recall staying with my aunt in Chicago, having saved up enough money to buy a Sega CD working at a fast food joint. I rushed out to Electronics Boutique, who had one on hold for me. However, the choices were kind of limited as far as the pack-in games went. These choices were Soul Feast, Sherlock Holmes, and a collection of Sega Genesis classics. The latter which I already had all of those games on cartridge. So I played Soul Feast, and I played a lot of it. I was never great at these side-scrolling shooters, but there was something about this one that made me want to keep playing it. Perhaps I was enamored with the beauty of the opening cutscenes, the like of which I had never seen up until this point. Or maybe it was the amazing soundtrack. I think most of all, it was the relentless difficulty. It's that kind of difficulty that's frustrating and yet challenges you enough to know you can do it if you just keep trying. And man, did I try. I honestly don't recall ever beating this one. I recall making it to the final boss several times, but if I beat it, my memory is extremely fuzzy. Anyway, now that this is available to play on Mr., I can once again have a chance to work my way to victory. I would say if you're a fan of side-scrolling shooters, you should definitely play this one. Here's one I had no idea existed until recently. Star Wars Rebel Ass. Oh, wait, I mean, Rebel Assault. Ugh, I hope that isn't an indicator of things to come. All right, okay. This is kind of cool so far. Dog fights in space, what's not to like? It is a period of civil war. What's so civil about war, anyway? Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. 
This cutscene with Darth Vader looks so compressed. It's as if someone ripped a digital bootleg of a bootleg version of the Star Wars movie from YouTube and put it into this game. Hey guys, pizza's on me! Yikes. And many young unknown pilots have joined Dang. All I wanted to do was go to Toshi Station and pick up some power converters. Ouch, and now both suns are burning my eyes. Also, Ricky One, no one here moves anything but their mouths. You'll get used to it. Stay on course, Harris. Oh, great. Flying turds. Yeah, we all know where this is going. All right, let's buckle in and see what kind of rebel ass we're getting ourselves into. Er, uh, that came out wrong. Oh, sweet. Actual gameplay. Well, I can't shoot or slow down or speed up. I guess I just have to fly through these poop-looking mountains. Wow, the controls suck. Turn! Turn, you piece of crap! Damn! Stay tight, follow our lead, and stay clear of the walls. Oh, don't worry about me, my man. I always stay tight. But that means I always touch the walls. <sighs> Let's do this again. Man, this really blows to control. You'll have to try it for yourself to truly get how unresponsive and laggy the controls are. Great. Crash into Crap Mountain again. What? You can the? Him, but if you're really shot, follow me to the... Oh! Anchorhead base, this is Green Leader. Send a medical team. We're coming home. They're so disappointed in me. Like, screw this guy. Leave him here and send a medic in a few days to check on him. So yeah, this game is not fun so far. And this is as far as I go with it. It's cool for the lore and for the effort they put into it, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. And perhaps with some time and some more effort, I could get good enough to pass the first mission and check out more the game has to offer. But for now, I can't recommend this one too highly. So unless you're a huge Star Wars fan, skip it. This next one is called Road Rash, and it is the most screaming 90s grunge-tastic game I can think of. The entire soundtrack is laden with bands from the time Soundgarden, Paw, and Monster Magnet ruled MTV and the radio airwaves. Yes, I'm probably biased about this game more than any others on the Sega CD, but not because I'm a huge fan of grunge music, but more so that this is a great party game. There were so many nights spent during my college years playing this game with a bunch of friends over. All of us trying to progress the game by winning races and building up your arsenal of weapons and buying better bikes. Sure, we did multiplayer as well, and that was fun too. I know we had the Sega CD running through some giant Pioneer speakers and blasting the soundtrack all through the night until the sun would come up, smoking pot, drinking beer, and whatever else you do in college in the mid-90s. So needless to say, while I knew I had fun with this game, my memories were a bit fuzzy. So I had to wonder, will this game hold up today? Hell yes it does! I popped this onto the Sega CD card, fired up Mr., and gave it a go. From the opening cutscene until the time I finished racing, I was enthralled with everything the game has to offer. Sure, the frame rate's a little choppy, but for the most part, the game treats you fairly. It's challenging, but not to the point where you want to give up. Like any good game with a challenge, this one makes you want to keep trying. If you take away anything from this quick review of Road Rash, it should be this. I'm not usually a fan of racing type games. I enjoy a few of them, like the Burnout series, or classics like Pole Position, but this game has enough going for it that it transcends racing games and just becomes a pure, fun game. It might be my bias, but I say play it. For sure. While there are many other worthy titles to cover, the final one I want to discuss today is a little game called Snatcher. If you're a fan of Hideo Kojima, or like the Metal Gear franchise, you might know about this one already. If you haven't heard of it, but you like Kojima, then you might want to give it a try. The story itself is very Kojima, and 
even includes a Metal Gear within the main plot. Snatcher is a cyberpunk graphic adventure set in the future, taking inspiration from such franchises as Terminator and Blade Runner. You take on the role of Gillian Seed, an amnesiac who hopes to find out who he is by investigating Snatchers, which are Terminator-like cyborgs. You do this by selecting different text options to progress the story. There are also a few action sequences where you shoot things on a grid. Originally, this was done with the light gun, or in this case, playing on a modern display, you're able to do the job with the D-pad controller. But if you're playing Snatcher, it's not going to be for the action. It's going to be for the story. If you're a fan of the Kojima style, or just want to play an interesting, mature cyberpunk adventure, then you should check this one out. Personally, I say play it. So that's going to cover the first five games I played after obtaining the Mega CD Core from Mr. Of course, there are a ton of other games out there for you to try and enjoy for this underrated console. What are some of your favorites? Let me know and maybe I'll cover them in a future episode on the channel. In the meantime, if you could share this with some of your friends who enjoy the Sega CD or are just into retro gaming in general, I would really appreciate it. Also, what do you think of the Mr. as a console? Let's get a discussion going. Until next time, I want to thank you for watching and sticking it out to the end of this video. You are the best, and it's you who I love sharing with, so I hope to see you back real soon.